everybody. Welcome to Soapbox. I'm your host, Mickey Angeline. And today I have two special guests here tonight with me to discuss. The topic will be about mental illness, homelessness, and uh, the issues we're, sa we're um, facing it here in America today. So the, go the guests I have to talk with me about this are Jen Rogar and Sara Shorl. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. I think this is going to be a really great show. We're going to get raw and real, I think. Uh, but before we get into this awesome topic tonight, we do want to give a special shout out to our sponsors. Pieces Pizza. Pizza by the Slice. Located in downtown on 21st between Capitol and N Street. Really great pizza. They have been a longtime supporter of Soapbox. They feed our crew every show. In fact, I got a great piece earlier today. It was awesome. So definitely check them out. They're again downtown at 21st between Capitol and N Streets. That's Pieces Pizza. Pizza by the Slice. Humor Times, the world's funniest news source by James Israel. It's a comic satire full of cartoons on the political tip. If you want to have a little more fun and take it a little less serious with your politics, Definitely subscribe to the monthly subscription of Humor Times. You can go to their website at humortimes.com or give them a call at 916-455-1217. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook. Soapbox Sacramento has a Facebook. Like us, follow us, and definitely comment on tonight's show or any other show. We would love to hear from you. That's our Facebook page, Soapbox Sacramento. And last but not least, we now have a YouTube channel. That's right. So you can subscribe and never miss an episode. Just go to YouTube and find Soapbox Sacramento. Click that subscribe and you will get notifications in your email for every show that pops up on YouTube for Soapbox Sacramento. So now let's get into the uh, meat and potatoes. Um, I welcome Jen, good friend, great singer-songwriter. Feminist activist and or her friend, you invited Sora Shorl here. We're going to talk about some a topic that is very near and dear to your heart. Yes. Uh, when I was a kid, I grew up in Auburn in 1976, and I watched the mental hospitals being shut down at that time by Ronald Reagan. And my dad owned a restaurant, and the mentally ill were really put out on there on their own and and now I am a teacher I see mental illness with the, the young I see homelessness off the hook criminalization of um, of homelessness uh, increased crime because we don't have adequate uh, mental health facilities because of Reagan he shut them all down so it's quite a struggle you know and uh, I want to be part of changing that so it hasn't changed since then, because we're talking in the 1980s. Right. right. It's gotten worse and worse, and all you, you, know, you hear about you know, shootings that happened, and uh, there's some seriously mentally ill people out there that are homeless and also um, just not getting the services they need, and the services they do get are woefully inadequate. You know, I mean, a lot, of the, a lot of the mental health centers just throw a pill at them and a little bit of counseling and what we really need is a holistic approach with uh, things like meditation and yoga and nature and you know qigong or art therapy or music therapy you know um, and then and then also another thing as a teacher I've seen um, there's this testing and perfection and 4.5 GPA and pressure and cyber bullying almost all my students they don't sleep. They have anxiety. They're on pills. They're mentally ill. They're, they're, they're sometimes as young as five years old. They're given um, anti-anxiety pills or, you know, they're ADD. They're labeled bipolar. They're this or that. So these are students that have been, that have been diagnosed. Some are undiagnosed. Some are diagnosed. Um, but I've been a teacher 20 years and, and it's just unbelievable. And then I, I did some research in the United States has the highest uh, bipolar rate and it might it might be tied to our the way this this country was set up you know the the go get them uh, mentality uh, you know people came from other countries and um, it's it it's just it's a it's such a uh, uh, the society is so um, easy you can become easy, easily uh, 
full of anxiety. I just came down from Mount Shasta and this, I see the difference, you know, the, being up there in the trees and the nature and very healing. And then, you, you know, I have students that live in South Sacramento that never leave South Sacramento and they're just surrounded by concrete. And violence. And violence yeah. and, and, you know, uh, angry water. Angry water. Water, on water, that. water's angry. If you, uh, in the, in the, the water pipes, um, if they, if you look into Dr. Emoto's water experiments, you go and Google that, you'll see how water responds positively to beautiful music and things like classical and. Really? Um, yes. Wow. And, but, but it, the water molecule changes, um, to heavy metal. So if you grow up in a household a with anger, all I the like time, that, your enough. water, we're made of water, is constantly agitated. Wow. This yeah. is stuff we don't even teach kids yeah, at what all. Yeah, what he did was he would freeze. He would um, chant over a body of water or a glass of water or sing a beautiful song or play a song um, or, you know, the opposite, yell at a, at the water and say negative things and then he would f take a sample of the water and freeze it and so it would crystallize if it was positive energy into these beautiful crystal forms but if it was chaotic energy mm -hmm. like me heavy metal let's say for example or uh, negatives you know saying negative things it was not a beautiful crystal it was really very disorganized and who was this by? Um, Dr. Emoto. Wow know. I'm gonna have to look that up that's <coughs> incredible yeah, 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 lots of experiments he did. And, and water ha holds memory. Right. Uh, they, they, they think that, you know, water all over the globe holds memory of every conversation, of everything that ever happened. So, like, when a dolphin really dives... Yes. <laughs> well, I'm learning a lot today. No, yeah. this is great. Keep so, going. Keep going. So, you know, I mean, it's no wonder uh, that people are so, you know, messed up. Because they're drinking this water... And yeah. the energy, because water, like she said, uh, it's a memory because it it's receptive to the vibrations right. and hold the vibration. Mm -hmm. That's why you you know like Bach flower remedies or other type of remedies where they use water and just dilute amounts of you know a flower essence. It's records that and then you, that you is, know, use it as a medicine. I feel like that could be like so, just a whole so other topic. A, <laughs> I just, oh yeah, yeah. Think about a prison situation or a mental hospital right. that's got like these gray walls and, you know, strap mm. you down and it's just, here's a pill and it just treat, it just treats the top of the surface of the problem. It doesn't even treat it. It just masks it. It masks it. Yeah, exactly. and, and the and way we're key. raising our kids, you know, uh, punishment and reward, there's so much we could talk about, you know, but I want to be part of that change change and work with kids and um you know people are out like i said they're homeless out there and um we need not state mental hospitals anymore but but these you know nice what i would say warm and fuzzy community based uh programs a lot of them because our society is really sick it's just sick well, you've been in the school system for, you said, 20 years. Mm -hmm. and, and are you a teacher, Sora? Uh, I'm an associate teacher, but I've worked um, in for over 20 years in this different school districts okay. in different capacities. For a number of years, I worked in a non-directive play therapy program under the supervision of a psych, psych, psychologist, clinical psychologist, where I would do uh, play therapy led by the child, ages wow. uh, kindergarten through second grade. Okay. And... Um, and also sand, sand, sand play, sand play was um, involved, sand tray play, I forget exactly now, but uh, I would take pictures because it's highly symbolic, we'd have different, you know, archetypical, um, archetypal uh, figurines and I'd take a snapshot and then the psychologist would, you know, interpret it. But there were, it was for children with mild adjustment issues. I had children that were five, six years old self-harming or, uh, you know, just acting out in different ways through their play, just a lot of negative things that came out about their family and what was going on. And I, I love my job, but they cut the funding. Sac City used to have it. Uh, Folsom Cordova used to have this program. So to me, we need, a, like as she was saying, we need more treatment, easier access for uh, students. For example, in the schools in Finland, they do that, but also we need prevented prevention. Mm -hmm. So those early right. interventions uh, were, were wonderful, but you know, funding was cut. So um, there's both parties are not funding 
mental health and it's not the big issue it should be well, Obama in his 2015 speech vaguely mentioned mental health most mental health professionals say our system is in shambles so another problem real quickly is that you know the patient has too many <laughs> rights it went from they had no rights they were locked up for years and years and years by their families to now it's they're out in 72 hours 72 hours so because unless they give you permission to speak on their behalf right you can't find out what happened and then there and then there's a crunch with you know how many beds there are and all that so i mean we're talking about psychotic people who that police there's good police out there that work really hard and they they got to you know pick up the individual who could be dangerous to others or themselves get locked up for 72 hours and then they're let out Right. And and I, I, yeah, and I read about a man who almost killed his father with a baseball bat. You know, I read that recently on a on a story, and he ended up killing the dog instead. And they kept trying and trying to get him help. And you, that's why you keep hearing all these crime stories. Well, so let me ask Criminal, you this: uh, you know, you're saying that they they've been submitted, uh -huh. and then and then out. after submitted, but are they being are they being diagnosed? Are they being? It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. they, they could have a long. But history. are they? Some of them are, have long diagnosis, like and they've, been, they've been bipolar for years. So then how do they determine that they get out well, in 72 see, hours? I guess that's the, really the question. Well, the thing is uh, when uh, uh, at the beginning we had these state institutions and people were diagnosed, even people that were deaf, for instance, and were kept in these institutions for years and years. Mm -hmm. So in 1963, John F. Kennedy uh, passed, they passed the uh, Community Health Care Act or the New Frontier, and the idea was to... Uh, get away from the state institutional model and to have it be local community health care centers and uh, to keep it local so uh, patients could be with their fam be near their families and get that support and um, and also uh, to have more compassionate care and it was funded and everything but then uh, with uh, and it was uh, you know it takes a long time for these things to happen and they were building these centers uh, then when it came to Carter he was going to refund these programs mm -hmm. but then Reagan, Reagan came that was in. the beginning of 80 yeah and Reagan, then Reagan was, because Reagan defeated Carter and yeah then and he just election. killed everything and he, yeah he just dropped it just give just, him a pill and let him go right and then when I came into Auburn that's what I experienced I saw people just sitting in my dad's restaurant all day long just drinking coffee just nowhere to go no aftercare no here's your pills and they don't take And these pills. are mentally ill people mm -hmm. yeah, you remember so, this and how young oh, yeah. were you oh 11 so they have diagnoses, yeah. mm -hmm. but they're move, with this move to local community health care centers, it was away also from uh, people being uh, interned against their will. And the idea was that people uh, had the right to say, no, I don't need to be in a facility. But the thing is, these are people with severe mental illness that do need you know to and to, so by diagnosis because they, they have don't. a big disconnect from reality right. so a lot of them will say I'm not manic or I'm not you mm -hmm. know so They're this not population may need to be <laughs> yeah. placed you know unfortunately against their will because they're a harm to themselves and what do you think others. that is what do you think they're being released like that do you think money it's a political? Uh, and so many ill people and there's only so many resources so we have to start from the ground up and and try to work and not have so many ill people uh, you know, and the schools can do so much, you right. know, with with uh, parenting or, you know, um, bringing art back in the schools and music and, and tools. I agree with that one. Yeah, tools for art kids to music release. Belong and, in schools. and, you know, geography is taught like it's a natural resource and this is a tree. No, that's, this is your mother. And, you know, if you raise a kid to feel connected to the earth. Right. It changes everything. But it's kind of hard to right. teach them to be connected when we're teaching them how to chop it all down and right. you know, build right. build buildings every and skyscrapers. I, and every student I have is just incredibly, they, we have a discussion, all of them, they say, do you know the burden that I feel as a young person with the way the world is? They all say that. Wow. Yeah. Wait, how old are these students? Teenagers. Wow. 15, 16, 17. They're all burdened, and they bury themselves in video games. Oh, yes. Uh, addiction, uh, sometimes reading too much, sometimes drugs, uh, cutting, suicide. I mean, it's it's profound. A lot of video game playing. 
I have a hard time getting them to do their their work, their homework, because they're they're addicted to video games. Well, and do you think with uh, well, you know, because ADD and ADHD is a huge factor in children today. I know. Mm -hmm. Just going back for me, because I have a daughter. Um, mm -hmm. SpongeBob SquarePants, that cartoon was the first cartoon to um, be considered a problem for children because of its seven seconds mm -hmm. editing. Mm -hmm. So it changed frames every seven seconds. So subconsciously, it was the beginning of the end of being able to focus for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Because you were given information yeah. so quickly, and now it was fast forward to internet and surfing right. and kids the on media. videos and, and, and the eight second Snapchat and, and, right. and the seven bullying. second Vine. There's cyber bullying that goes oh, on. Totally. Desensitizing of yeah. them, you know, and, and, and diet has a big, you know, I've read a lot of articles where mm -hmm. diet has a huge role in the ADD, you know, syndrome. And so do you eat. feel all of these things over the years? Because you're saying, I mean, it's gone before Reagan, but do you think it's over time? It's in, in addition to all of these things, the poor diet, the poor water supply. And yeah, then, it's a um, lot of things. It needs to be factor, a holistic approach. Another yeah. factor is uh, little recess outdoor time yes. in the schools. And They've cut that back immensely. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, the teacher I work with went to a workshop uh, given by someone who has studied this and, it, and, and research shows that the less uh, recess time, the grades go down. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, in Finland, I think they let the kids, they only go to school three hours a day. I think it's Finland. It was in the Michael Moore movie, A Where to Invade Next. And uh, they, and they, they learn the Moore. highest. Yeah. <laughs> they learn the most, uh, and they, they play a lot, and they, they have no homework, no testing, none of that. And here, you know, it's... I think I've seen that on Facebook. And Diane Ravitch. There you know, are some good right things out. on Facebook. And I think that, yeah, <laughs> that was one of them. I think I remember seeing that because I also remember seeing some video about, and I think it was in, I, want, I don't want to say, I almost want to say it was Germany, but maybe mm -hmm. not. There were these kids who school, they literally hiked to school. Oh, like they hiked and it was <laughs> like in the mountains and it was like a mile hike or something. And it was an all day affair. And then mm -hmm. they would come home and mm -hmm. they would learn outdoor things and survival things, mm. not just textbook information, right, English, right. writing, arithmetic, that sort of thing. Well, part of the benefits of being out on their own, the children playing, is that they, they take on different roles or they, they organize their play, they make mm -hmm. up their own games, the rules. Imagination, now, right, creativity. Right, right, right but imagination. Also, not being fed what they right. think they're supposed to be told, right? Right, yeah. so, I mean, you know, entertainment is created for them, but when you look at traditionally, uh, it used to be games and uh, were, were handed down from one generation of children to another. You know, all those, you know, jump rope games or, you know, uh, when I was growing up in, in Shoots Herbalife, and ladders, <laughs> Monopoly, <laughs> life. But before that, you know, <laughs> freeze tag. For me, anyway. Kids made up their own mm -hmm. games and they were handed down from one generation of children to the other generation of children, the oldest to the youngest. So there was a traditional children's culture mm -hmm. that was kind of managed by the children, you know. And so now it's not created by the children. It's the media that, you know, here are these games for you to do. So we're not creating, you know, pr children are not exercising, like you say, their imagination, right. their creativity, or their organizational society, social skills. So let me ask you this. Yeah. These are all the ways to do preventive maintenance for our youth. What do you propose we should do for the adults? Mm -hmm. Take them back to their youth as much as you can take them back to their childhood the more act like a, the more i act like a little kid the happier i am right i'm into fairies i have a fairy door i do i have a fairy door i believe door you jen on my door. i believe you jen i have a fairy in my arm okay Aww. um i my kids think i'm regressing and you know um i i'd skip rope if i could you know, I mean, the more you play... Yeah, I don't think I could skip rope. Okay, no. <laughs> Arthritis <laughs> is a pain in the ass. never oh. But the more you play... <sighs> you know, if you, if you took people uh, in, in some of the uh, you know, hospitals and, and dance and, um, you know, art, coloring... I have my students color. I buy these unique, you know, these books that, are, that, are, that, that take time and I give them their art credit and they have to actually take the time and color in... You know, mm -hmm. and, and they have like these uh, Mandela's and you can buy them in the oh, art stores. Oh, I love those. And, and it has they nature had a, themes. They and had a really, Mandela. Yeah. It's the um, yeah. Tibetan or... Right, mm -hmm. right. They were here in Sacramento, I think it was like 2000, 
nine yeah, i still have my sample I they like, spend <laughs> all week yeah. and they build that thing and then at the end they destroy it right. and then you get to go along and you get to collect your little i still have mine and it's by my bed it's bringing yeah, out your inner it. child it is and you know we can't keep medicating everybody yeah. and throwing That's them the in prison we have to do but, something and go go back to but well, even the when they soil, medicate they even when they medicate because i have disabled parents that go through and they, yes. and they between them both they must take like 40 prescriptions oh, a day wow. They give you it, and they they don't even really explain too much other than they don't even really explain what it shouldn't go with, other than they just tell you when to take it right. and if you should be asleep and not driving. Right. You know they don't educate right. you on, you know don't mix. It don't with drink these. too much coffee; it's going to make you snarky. <laughs> Did yes. you just say snarky? Snarky, yes. Well, I think but you're right. Too much coffee will affect. Yeah, yeah. But I think drinking. it's also how you look at uh, uh, mental health and this human psyche. And there's uh, been a movement for a long time called the anti psychiatrist and um, it's that the the psyche is self healing, just like the body is self healing. It just needs to be supported. So when you have people that suffer trauma and therefore then go up into their, I come from the chakra energy system they go up to their sh upper chakras they're not grounded and they go into this very symbolic world you know the schizophrenia and the mm -hmm. and the manic um, yeah. the bipolar right. it's very mythological and symbolic and so um, in Finland they're using open dialogue and it, it, and it goes along that line of validating the person's experiences or what their their fan their uh, delusions are and 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 having a conversation with that with that client and and looking to see what is this delusion saying about the the issues that person is having instead of totally saying no you know this is wrong right you know and suppressing right. it it's and people don't even know psyche, the human well, no. psyche trying to heal itself <laughs> i like that it's a jungian kind of it goes yeah. back to young people don't even know what a that, chakra that is kind of that's movement. a much better yeah. approach because honestly right. in my opinion all pills are for is so that other people can tolerate being around you yes mm -hmm. I don't believe the pills. That's what they're for. Well, it, but and it it's makes important. you feel bad about yourself and what you've got going crisis. on with you. Right. I would agree. There's it's a good place in that crisis period, but it shouldn't yeah. be the end all. Right. Correct. And there are so let's other get to types the root of, of why you even right. exactly. Came, yeah. And there's other types of of more holistic drugs that that can be used instead of the ones that are the commonly used mm -hmm. too. So we, that, yeah. Like she said, there is a place for that. But it needs to be. But, but um, you know, what caused the original trauma? Maybe it can be undone. There's, there's. Oh right, right. Especially if you're, in, you know. But if we slow down society person. and we make it more people friendly, right? We won't have so many people having right. traumatic episodes and then psychosis to begin with. So. Right. right. It's it, we gotta you know we gotta clean the soil, right. so to speak, and get the the toxins out so we can have organic. Food and we need like maybe organic people again or something. Some Sounds sort like of a movement needs to happen. <laughs> if it isn't already happening, and maybe well, we need to research and find the exactly right movement. Exactly, like Northern Ireland, find out where these non, you know, uh, ther these therapies that don't rely on drugs. And uh, for instance, this open dialogue. In two to three days, they said they were getting people, you know, schizophrenics and uh, bipolar, connect, you know, back connected to reality, and that uh, the diagnosis of sch uh, schizophrenia started plummeting so maybe we need to research the northern maybe Ireland model and and even in our own country there's plenty of alternative psychologists I'm sure Peter Weyer um, I forget his last name right now he's one that um, he diabasis was the name of his kind of therapy so you know there's it sounds like there's a lot of options out yeah, there now I believe so before yeah. we end the show I know Jen singer-songwriter. You yeah. have a song mm -hmm. that you wanted to share a line or two with us, yeah? Yeah, I, I started off, it's uh, called Shadow Man, and it's a it's all the reasons, not all the reasons, but some of the reasons why people become homeless. Okay, you know, let's so. hear it. <clears throat> Jen Rogar, ladies and gentlemen. thousand miles on roads you'll never tread She's tired of living life while wishing she were dead He 
passes by so fast and barely lifts his head she glances at the shadow man and nothing's done or said Would she be my mother? Oh, someone's sister, brother. Oh, why don't I bother? Why is he too much trouble? She's found a cold, dark street to lay her body down. She's told to move along while sleeping on the ground. He takes her things away and kicks her out of town. He rocks his child to sleep in a bed safe and sound. Someone's long lost father. Oh, why don't I offer? Oh, why is he too much trouble? Thank you, Jen, and sorry for being here. Thank you. That's Thank a, that's you. a Thank that's the most of the song. When you'll have to wait till the CD comes out <laughs> and get, get all. Of I it. cannot wait. That was really really good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Um, and thank you again for being on the show. Oh, well, that was very informative. Nice. The information you shared, I learned a great deal. Now mm -hmm. you're going to make me want to go and research these people, <laughs> like you know the one you told me about with the water. Oh yeah, definitely. And water. then the better methods of yeah. dealing with like the, the bipolar and the mental illness. I know you touched on bipolar like more than once. Is that like the more common illness? Uh, well, I know. It's a crisis situation.